Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It is officially go time, people. The clock is ticking on this month, which is January, depending on when you're watching this or listening to it. It is Get Organized Month. Yes, I said go, G-O, Get Organized. And that also includes your office. I know for a fact, and when I look around, there's tons of things around here in my studio. And this is not a home office. I'm in a building right now. I there, I wouldn't even let you. See, and I'm org. I think I'm organized. I don't think I would show you. <laughs> I wouldn't even move the camera around because I might be a little embarrassed that I I've got oh, some ways to go. Uh, I promise you, I have seen worse. I have uh, seen like things that would make your jaw drop. So uh, you know, I, I bet you have, and I don't think I'm that bad. I think I'm pretty well organized, but there's definitely, we'll get to that. She has the top tips for organizing your office. She's a professional organizer, works with individuals, state situations, all of that. Janet Jackson, love the name, is with us again today. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Steve? I'm good. And of course, the first thing I do since we're doing a Zoom here is I'm looking at your office and I see that you have things in binders and uh well organized, I would say that for sure. Yes. Yeah. And let me, you know, shout out to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So my first career choice was to be a race car driver, but this is a pretty good plan B. <laughs> oh, wow. How interesting is that? All right. Well, I love you know, the Indy 500. And you're in Ohio? I am in Ohio. Yes. Yes. Wow. But we have virtual services everywhere. Um, so we can serve. Yeah. I've, I've got a team member in Reno, one in Wisconsin. Um, we, we can serve virtually anywhere. I want to get to that in a little while, how you do that virtually, but let's go right into it. Top tips for, for organizing your office, any particular order? Um, well, maybe, um, not, not necessarily. I will tell you, I will tell you the hands down number one though. All right. Okay. Hands down number one, top tip for having an organized office or being organized in your office and this is going to sound strange. Don't be out of your office more than half of your work week. So I first heard hmm. this principle. Don't, and the principle was shared with me as don't schedule more than half your day. So the idea being, if you're in meetings all day, you can't possibly be organized in your office because you haven't spent any time in there. And so going looking at it from a day perspective doesn't work in my world just because of how I travel and visit clients and those kinds of things. So the rule that's worked for me is don't schedule more than half of your week. So what that means is um, I have a long day of clients on Thursdays. I have an offsetting non-day of meetings one other day of the week. So typically that's a Friday, but you just kind of, you know, it's really all about intention and looking at your calendar and not just giving away chunks of time because you think you're, you're free. Um, but being intentional that these are the blocks of times that I'm going to schedule meetings for. And these are the blocks of times that I'm going to be in my office doing the work. Um, so I gotcha. do, a, I, I have a half day workshop and a lot of times we'll talk about, are you more organized at work or more organized at home? I mean, people will say, you know, I've got it together at home. It's a work where I'm a train wreck or vice versa. I've got it together in the office, but at home it's a, you know, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And I always ask them, where, where do you spend the most time? Like, where are you seated or still the most? And because for years I couldn't figure out, well, why can you do it in the office and not at home? I couldn't figure it out. And then all of a sudden it resonated with me that, oh my gosh, the organized person in the office has three kids at home running here, there, and everywhere, sports schedule, school stuff. They don't have time to stay on top of things at home or vice versa. The person who's organized at home maybe is living alone or doesn't have a lot go as much going on or just has that under control. But in the office, they might be jumping from meeting to meeting. And so they're not actually in their space to do the work and to stay organized. So that's hands down the number one rule to be more organized in your office is be in your office. <laughs> gotcha. Well, you know, it makes sense because you're in the environment and you can at least take it all in what what you need to do i'm going to just i'm going to throw right here as we're we're in the office right yes i struggle with and we talked about this last time briefly papers and 
I have, so I and th this is after cleaning, I have papers on my desk and this little things that are pending, they're not like super important, but out of sight, out of mind. If I put them away, I'm not going to get to it. And I'll be honest, I have a couple of uh, letters that said thank you for something. And I want to I want to take the time and send a nice card back. I have these uh, cards uh, I designed for a charity and I send them out, but I want a handwritten note. But I got to be in my zone to do that because I want it to be heartfelt. I don't want to put it away because I, I then I'm not going to do it because I'm not going right. to see it. And I had the same thing last night. It's funny that we're talking about this. I'm at my desk last night. And I'm sitting there and I, you know, grab something to eat and I'm doing some work and I have some papers here, papers here, papers here, papers here. They're just bills, you know, just things that I renew a credit card, blah, blah, blah. I got to the point, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I picked them all up, threw them in a pile over here. And I was like, oh, my desk is clean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and it felt, and it felt good. But there is, there is something to that. And I think it's fascinating that you just brought that up just from your own personal choice there is that when you walk into a workspace, that is clutter free, your mind's clutter free, right? It gives you 100%. a sense of peace. And that's what you did yesterday. You didn't necessarily accomplish what you needed to do, but you're like, I have to reset because, because it, this, you know, my mind is just too cluttered to, I, I couldn't going. do it. I, it, I was going to explode. I really was. Yes. And, and, and aside from the fact that this particular desk, it's not huge, but you know, I got audio control there. I have, you know, a mouse. I have this, I have that, then my dinner and everything else. I'm like, I can't, like, I just get this out of the way. Uh, yeah. So now I have a pile. <laughs> yeah. So, so to, to go back to what you first started out, you also unknowingly made a perfect distinction. Uh, and this is one of my tips for people is to differentiate between what has to be done the credit card, getting the credit card taken care of versus the, you want to do it. The, the thank you cards that you talk about right. and don't keep those in the same piles or don't keep those in the same spaces because these things have to be done. These things you want to schedule time for. Sure. And so separate those with your action items. So my, my next tip would be for those things that have to be done, have some kind of a to-do system. That's what I, that's what my workshop's all about is setting up to-do systems. And, and it, it could be an old school paper tickler file. It could be a steno pad that you're jotting notes on. It could be Outlook tasks or whatever you have available in Google, um, other electronic apps. You know, there's all kinds of options, but the point is have one and have only one. Because the struggle is when I've got to do's in my email and I've got to do's in my text thread and I have to do's on paper or from meeting notes or whatever. Now, all of a sudden, I don't know how to prioritize my action items because they're in too many places. So somehow collect those. It doesn't mean you have to get them like every piece of information in the same place, but the trigger that reminds you to do something with it is in the same place. So it's a triggering system. Is it the the file system that you talk about? Is it that um, the the sectional thing that steps up, you know, where you put something here in this one, something here behind it, something here behind that? Well, I mean, it can be the. Um, uh, I I like the old school tickler file. Um, well, that's okay, what works just for me. I've heard that term a million times. Okay. Define it, like show me, give me an idea. So. And I want people to understand because there may be people who have already tuned me out because they're paperless and they're like, I'm not doing anything with paper. This tickler file can be electronic. You can do it however you want to. So what it means is that you're taking this volume of action items that you have to do, the things you need to do, <clears throat> excuse me, and you are deciding what day you're going to do it on. So maybe your credit card action item you're going to do on Tuesday. So in your your tickler file. And again, the tickler file could be a, the old school tickler file. What that is, is it's a set of, um, um, well, yeah, it's a set of one through 31 folders, like hanging folders labeled one through 31 representing the days of the month. And then behind it is January through December representing different months. <clears throat> so I started this for myself back in, well, pre 2001, like I, my to do system has been in place for 20 plus years. And because back then everything was more paper, 
Mine is still a paper-based tickler slice system, though I'm starting to, there's, there's some evolution there. Um, and so the idea is this notice comes in that I need to take care of my credit card and maybe I need to take care of it next month. I don't have to do it this month. I would drop it in next month's folder. Or if it's something I need to do next week, and maybe it's due next Friday, I would drop it in whatever date corresponds with maybe next Monday or Tuesday. So that I'm getting things out of my head, off of my desk and into a system that that just, I, I show up at my job at my desk that day and I pull out that folder and there's my prioritized work for the day. It also means taking that email that comes in that you, you can't take care of right away, um, print page one of that email and put it in that paper tickler file. Again, a lot of our listeners are not gonna be paper-based. I'm just, but sometimes I also think it's easy to visualize what that looks like. You can do this exact same thing in Outlook by you know, putting a, a task or an appointment in your calendar for what you're going to do that day. So you can you can do this the same thing. The, the trick of the tickler file, though, is today that we're recording is, oh my gosh, what is it? It's January 19th. So the trick is that nothing stays in the January 19th folder. So whatever I don't get done today, um, whatever's on my Outlook task list or, or calendar items, whatever doesn't get done today, gets redistributed to another day in the month. So what do you do if you have some things on paper, but just some things up here? Like you, I know I need to do this on that day. Um, I get it out of my head and put it on a piece of paper so it goes in the to-do system. Okay. All right. Or I would capture it. If, I'm, if my to-do system is electronic, I would capture it electronically and put it on the day that I plan to do it. Gotcha. Okay. I'll, now, while we're in this territory, and we're going to get back to the the top tips for organizing your office, but you know, we centered well, these on are right all, here. These are all part yeah, of it. So. It's all part of it, right? How about any apps that you might use to help you stay organized? Of course, you got Google Calendar, but that's more of a you know meeting based kind of thing. Uh, you can put whatever you want on there, and it's color coded. Blah blah blah. Do you have any any favorites? So I do not have any favorites. I'll be completely honest. If I were to have to pick one, I would probably pick Outlook. And Outlook, again, you could use your calendar. You could use the task, or they now call it the to-do list. Um, and if, you have, if you're a Microsoft 365 account sure. holder, they have a to-do list app there that I know people use it and, and enjoy it. And, and yeah, it's effective for them. There's also an app called Trello that is pretty cool. Um, and I know others have used Asana. I've, I've worked with colleagues and those are some of the apps that, that I've heard them say that they use. But I'm one that, in my opinion, it's all about the habit. Whatever tools you're currently comfortable with, develop the habit with those. Then if you want to explore some of these apps and those kinds of things, go ahead because you'll know what you need to do um, to continue your habit. Because too often, like like 99% of the time, I see people chasing the next new shiny object, right? <laughs> the next fun app, the next cool tool and those kinds of things. And sometimes, sometimes that's great. Sometimes it works out. But if you don't already have a habit in place or a process in place for managing these things, you now just have all the light clutter that you had before and an app with some stuff in it. So um, love all of that. And the habit thing is so key. Yes. Pick something and stick to it and habitually do it. Um, when you mention Asana, that to me, that is a collaboration app. Right. And there's another one. Uh, Basecamp is one of them. Very similar. Basecamp is a little pricey. I found Freedcamp is a knockoff. Totally free. Okay. Really cool. Okay. Um, but if you just want a to-do list, I've been using, and I and to your point, Janet, I need to get, I need to always do it <laughs> because sometimes I put it on the app. Sometimes it's on post-it note, like right over here. Right. This is a, this yeah, is the, exactly. I've been writing this for a week here. Um, but there's an app called any do, and it's, you find it at any dot do any dot do and a free, and it's got yeah. the same kind of stuff and you can categorize it. You can even do a shopping list for your supermarket, whatever. Um, just some I found, but Freedcamp camp is, um, 
I've been using it for years and I have a marketing company and I have team members in other areas. So it kind of works. You're spot on with what you just said in terms of the habit, because what happens? I'll put some of the stuff in, in Freed Camp or somebody else will, but then I'll like come up with an idea or, or a question or whatever, and I'll send an email and then I'll start a thread. Fast forward a month. It's like, now, where was it? And now I waste time going back to the email. Then I had somebody else uh, that that used to hit me up on Facebook Messenger. And that so there was more information. I'm like, what? all right, I remember. But where was it? I wasted right. so much time going back to the different sources. and yes. <laughs> just put it all in one. So exactly with the habit thing, totally right. true. You got to stick yeah. to it. And that's interesting, too. I would agree. Like, personally, you know, if you're just working individually, and I'm going back to what I said when I started this tip, have a to-do system, but have one to-do system. So pick what you're going to use, get everything yep. in it. But then I agree that if you're in a team environment, pick the collaboration tool that you're going to use, whether it's Microsoft Teams, Asana, or the ones you've mentioned. And that it just becomes your command center. Exactly. Like, life your work life runs through this and then and all of a sudden you're you're sleeping better at night because you aren't keeping things in your head because you're trusting that the system works and here's here's i think one of the key points in that you have a record like the other day there was a budget for something and there was a little discrepancy as to what the budget was so you know i'm going back to emails where we defined it and then I'm like where the hell is it <laughs> I don't know where it was. I can tell you it wasn't in Freed Camp where it should have been, but anyway. Uh, all right, back back well, to top tips. Yeah, so I, I want to piggyback when you talked earlier about the thank you card versus the credit card, the things that you have to do versus the things you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's super important to keep those two things separate because if you mix the things you want to do in with your the things you have to do, you're going to feel defeated every day. And that might've been what you were feeling last night when you're like, it's just too much. And you just threw it all together and got it out of the way. Whereas if you start to separate those, all of a sudden the action items is probably smaller. Um, and it, it all of a sudden becomes more manageable. And these other things, and, and I, I explained to people like, is anybody going to know if you didn't do it? right? <laughs> is anybody waiting on this? Is anyone going to know if you don't frame that thank you card or what, you know, whatever said you said you want to do it. And if they don't, then keep those separate. I refer to them as ideas, or you could call them should be done, whatever. It's these things that don't have to be done. Keep them separate and then keep them organized somewhere. I have a a folder tear behind me because as a solopreneur, I wear all the hats. And as an entrepreneur, you know, blooded kind of person, I have a million and a half ideas, which I'm pretty sure Steve, you do too. Like it's just constant, right? Mm -hmm. Just constant. So I'll jot them down and I throw them in the respective idea bin. So if it's a marketing idea, I throw it in that bin. If it's a logistical operations kind of idea, it goes in that bin. So but to your point, but if I put it out of sight, I'm never going to think about it. So this is the key with managing those kinds of ideas and the should be done is schedule time on your calendar. So I literally have recurring appointments on my calendar for idea work. And then when, when that shows up, I'm like, oh, oh, yay, I get to work on marketing ideas this morning. I grab my marketing idea bin out and I decide what I'm going to work on. Uh, so I'm going to be transparent here. Uh, so the credit card thing, it's been on my desk for about two weeks. And as I'm running out this morning, I grabbed the unactivated garbage here, unactivated credit card with the paper that says what number I have to call to reactivate the credit card because I, I got worried, you know, don't shut the lights off. <laughs> right, like, right. I, don't even, yes. I don't know, honestly. I don't have a lot. I have a number of credit cards for you know business and personal. Right. I don't know what's connected to this, but it's definitely a couple of utilities. So I was like, and I I don't even know when it expires. I got to get on that. I just couldn't. I got as I was literally walking out. I was like, mm, 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 I, you got to get it done, you know. And if I put it in my pocket, it's not. It's got to get done. So right. I got to get right. it. I need a system. I need. I need a Janet. That's what I need. Yeah. <laughs> I have a client. I love this. I have a client who says, could you janitize this for me? Oh, they, there you Isn't go. Isn't that great? <laughs> there you go. It's like uh, just, you know, a, a wave of the hand. 
What's it with? I, I forget which company it is. Uh, got one eight hundred junk or whatever it is, where they say, "Wave yeah. a finger and we'll take it away for you." Right, one eight hundred got junk. They're a great resource for residents yeah. and probably business. I haven't used them for business needed to, but. Mm. All right, so we have uh, some time left here. Another tip to organizing your office. Okay, um, let me. I'm kind of looking through my list over here, and. Are you um, looking in the tickler file? <laughs> no, I'm looking at a presentation <laughs> that I have. So one of the things that we've touched on that I kind of want to come back to, um, it's that whole habit thing. And it's it's a it's a principle I refer to. I mean, I learned it as COP. So prior to starting my business in 2001, I worked for Honda of America Manufacturing. And if anyone has ever worked in a Japanese work environment, like they're serious <laughs> about being organized. At the end of the day, we couldn't have anything on our desks, nothing. The whole desk had to be clear. Couldn't even, I had a colleague who had a picture of his family. Before he left for work, he would take that picture of his family and put it in his desk drawer. I mean, it had to be clear, nothing, no tchotchkes, nothing. So it's a pretty sterile environment, if, uh, you know, really. It's kind of a pretty sterile environment. So that might not I, I, I need to ask. I need to ask right, right at this point. When we say nothing on the desk, what does that constitute? Yeah. Phone. Okay. Right. I, I don't see that. You know, keyboard, mouse, uh, monitor. monitor. That's it? That's it. You know, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing. Because yeah. as I look around, I see things, you know, in front of me here that that doesn't need to be there. That's just for show. That doesn't need to be there. Or maybe that right there, you know, uh, area where I keep hens, you know, in a container. Um, this stuff doesn't need to be there. Some of it is sentimental. Some of it has a little, you know, meaning or whatever. But I could probably purge 45% of the this doesn't need to be here stuff. And, and mentally and energetically. Right. It would feel better. Right. I feel better. It does something. And I'm not advocating that people need to do that in their workspaces. Agree. I'm just giving you context from where I heard. Interesting. This. <laughs> yes. Um, mm. So they had a principle at the end of every shift and even office workers alike at the end of every shift, you were to practice COP. Uh, for, I think it was for 15 minutes and that, and I don't know if they still do, but it was COP. And I think the acronym stood for clean up, organize and pick up. So it meant, okay, you're done with your day, put things away, get things where they need to go. The pens go back in the drawer. The, the work you didn't get finished gets, you know, put in your, hopefully in your to-do system. Um, yeah. those kinds it's, of things. It's, it's also known as CRAP. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like resetting so that when you walk yeah. into work the next morning, you've got a clean palette. You can, you know, you're not, yeah, you just have a clean palette and you leave with a fresh mind. So I've switched the the COP just a little bit where I call it clean up, organize and plan or, or prep, whatever you want to call it. So take the last little bit of your day. And I love, I was working with a client one time and she called it, I'm going to, it's like a closing ceremony. So she called it her closing ceremony for the end of every day, schedule the last 15 minutes, half an hour, you know, tie up whatever loose ends you might have to do, get your mm. pens put back, put your papers that you, the work that you didn't get done or yeah, back in your, your tickler file or the work that's on your Outlook calendar or tasks that didn't get done today, get it drugged to the next day. I also want to come back. I'm going to write a note because there's one more thing I want to come back regarding that Tickler file. And I know we're starting to run out of time. Steve, our time yeah, we've got goes about so a minute, fast. minute and change. Um, okay. So anyway, practice COP at the end of the day. One quick shout out, Excel. We talked about Excel last time. Excel is a great way to set up that Tickler file or to-do system where I've seen people like spell out their weeks in columns and their times and they're dragging and dropping the work that they want to do in, in those Excel cells. So it's really cool. It's a hmm. really cool potential. Yeah. So when you talk Great about idea. apps, I like to use the apps you already know and love. I don't know Excel that well. <laughs> so, right. But for anyone who does, that's, yeah, uh, that's an option. But you know what? So many people do because it's part of their job. It's not really part right. of my job. Can I, right. can I, Wend my way through it. Yes. Normally what I do, if I can't do something the way you're supposed to do it, I'll find a way around it to get it done. But it's like five steps more. But yeah, you're right. There's so many people that use Excel and you know, fairly proficient at even just the basics there. 
Right. So yeah. how do we engage you, whether you are somebody that's got a mess at home, if you need to clean up your office, if you need to clean up your business, your employees, how does that whole process work? So um, my website is organizationsolutionsllc.com, which is a mouthful, I'm sorry. But if you go there in the very opening welcome paragraph, you could either fill out a contact us form and, and give me a little bit of information and we can start an email exchange or you can schedule a time to chat with me. So I've got 30 minute blocks out there available. So if somebody is curious about engaging with me, they can schedule a time to chat and I can hear their particular situation and, and see if we might be the right fit. Yeah. It's so cool. And nowadays that, you know, virtually that you can do it with, I would assume just somebody doing a FaceTime or just some kind of video, yes. even just a zoom, just walking yes. around them, showing you stuff and having right. like, we're having a conversation here. Uh, yeah. Even in this time, I learned a lot about you and how you operate in terms of the office and great tips, by the way, really appreciate it. Wonderful. My pleasure. My pleasure. My door is always open, by the way, if you want, <laughs> if you want to come in and, and tackle the mess. But uh, all right. Yeah. So where are you located? I'm in New York. I just outside right. of New York City. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. I'll, but, I'll put uh, it on my list. <laughs> <laughs> you put it in the tickler file. Uh, Janet, great talking with you. And I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I'll put it in my ideas. There you <laughs> it go. Doesn't have to be done, but I want to do it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But you know what? I don't dislike doing it. I just need right. better systems and just even identified, you know, even the, in the uh, collaboration software. And I even said to somebody the other day, uh, we're going to start putting everything in here. We're going to, I'm not doing it yet. I, you know, I need to get into, I, like you said, you got to form the habit and you need to commit and stick to it, which is essential. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Looking forward next time we get together. My pleasure. Likewise. Thanks. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.